Listen, today we are going to be tackling one of the toughest nuts to crack in key account management. That is when the founder hires you to take over the accounts, but doesn't want to let go. We're going to figure out how to get them to give you the green light on leading those critical client relationships. So sit tight. I'm going to be right back. Welcome back, heroes. You are listening to the Camp Club podcast, a show that's on a mission to help key account managers go from busy to boss. I'm your favorite camp coach, Warwick Brown, and today we're going to be talking about how to take over those key accounts from founders who are used to calling all the shots. They're the ones that built the relationships and they don't want to let them go, even though they hired you to do just that, to take the lead. Let's start at the very beginning, right? Why are these founders so attached to these clients? Why don't they want to let them go? Well, the, the, the reason is that they've had these relationships for a long time. Many of the clients they're now asking you to lead are going to be clients that have been with them from the very beginning when the business was barely a twinkle in their eye. So now that the business is in a place where they need to scale, where they need to leverage, where the founders need to step away from the day-to-day management of these accounts and move into a more strategic focus, it's hard for them to let go. It's their, it's their babies, you know? It's like any child that they've seen grow up and they've nurtured and they've developed and they've helped grow it's hard to see them leave the nest. So it's really an emotional attachment rather than a rational one. So I think when you understand why they're hanging onto these accounts, and also on on the flip side, many of the clients, well, they feel many of the clients won't want to leave them, that, you know, they will be offended or upset if they are passed over from the founder, the person that started the company, to the key account manager they've just hired, to manage the clients instead. Let's move into a bit more about how do we build trust, right? We understand there's an emotional investment. We need to we need to get them over this hurdle, and we're going to do that by building trust. Now, despite the fact that there was a rigorous interview process, that they have complete confidence in your background, your expertise, your skills, your abilities, the value you can create, there is still going to be an element of trust that you need to earn despite your credentials, right? You want to establish your credibility within the organization. That means taking control of your, you know, your, your onboarding, you know, having a very solid 90-day plan, building your internal partnerships, laying down the foundations of your product knowledge and your sales pitch and your background knowledge on the accounts and the way that you um, understand and research and get information on, uh, on what the accounts are up to, where they've been, where they're going, who the key stakeholders are. You want to make sure that you are really well, what's the word, uh, researched. <laughs> this is the word I was looking for. Really well researched on the individual customer, their pain points, why they're working with the business, the challenges that they've had, the successes that they've had. You've got your internal champions, you've built relationships with other departments, and you have showcased to the the founder, you're ready and willing to take these accounts on. Then you want to build out a transition plan. They may not want to hand over every single account in one go. That's fine. Take it in a phased approach. Ask them which of the clients that they feel most comfortable handing over sooner rather than later Come to them with your introduction strategy, how you want to introduce yourself, what the timeframes are, what are your roles, what are your responsibilities, what are they expecting you to do? Make sure that you're really aligned to the founder's vision, not only for the business, but what they had in mind for the clients, where they were headed with the clients in terms of strategy. Show the founder you care just as much as they do about the business and about the clients and give them complete confidence you are more than capable of taking over the accounts. You build out a plan. You've done all your research, you've done your homework, you're ready to sink your teeth into it, and you are finding out when is the most appropriate place and time to do it. Don't wait for the perfect opportunity because it never arrives. If you have that coming up in the diary, that's great. If there's a business review or some other meeting, great, perfect timing. But if there's nothing like that in the immediate future, just send out an email from the founder introducing you and letting the client know that you are going to call them directly to arrange a time to introduce yourself personally and that you'll have a formal handover at some point in time with the founder, something like that. And obviously the founder's not going anywhere, so it's not like they're not still in the business. They're still around behind the scenes to make sure that you are fully aligned with expectations and you know any of that knowledge transfer is still available. Then once you start to take over these accounts, you want to communicate, in fact, probably over-communicate. While you don't want to loop them into the conversations, you want to keep them updated so that they know what's going on, so that they feel reassured that they're not totally cut out. I don't want to suggest that you should be co-managing these accounts by any stretch because it's confusing for everybody. But internally, keep the, you know, keep the founder up to date. Let them know when you're about to meet somebody. Let them know what happened in that meeting. Let them know any conversations that took place that you think they might be interested in. Just reassure them that things are ticking along nicely. 
and that you know all of the hard work they did prior to you taking over the account has come home to roost you know that all of those things are are playing out nicely with the client and they're happy if they're not happy then let them know the kind of things that you're currently working on and let them know the issues that have come up and that you are fixing and you know keep them updated so next step showcase value here's where you want to kind of find some ways to demonstrate the contribution you've made to the client's success and it can be a small thing it could be fixing an outstanding bug it could be an issue that's been dragging on for a long time it could just be that you have been able to set some configurations in the in the system that are enabling them to you know uh, improve the way that they use the product it could be that you're onboarding new users or you've agreed a new training program or something small that's going to show the client uh, sorry the founder that you are working with the the client, that you are thinking about the future, that you are starting to implement actions and strategies that are adding value and celebrate those. If you get a nice compliment from the client by an email, forward it and just say, FYI, seems to be really happy with the the way things are going so far. You know, anything that you can do that's going to show evidence that you're doing a good job and the client sees that, however big or small that might be, that is what you want to start to share communicate your value. So there's communicating what you're doing uh, as that sort of bridge between, you know, the the, the founder letting go and you taking over. But then you want to double down on that by showing the value, showing that the client is appreciating working with you and that you're starting to get some wins. You're starting to show some successes. So you know the founder is emotionally attached. You have done all your research. You've built your internal networks. You have demonstrated that you know all about the product and the account. You have communicated all the stuff that you're doing with the client. You have shared some of the initial successes and wins you've had with these clients you've taken over. There are still opportunities for feedback. So take a moment after you're a couple of months into this relationship to ask the client, hey, how are we working together? I want to make sure that the way that we're working is optimized. If you've got any feedback for me, if you have any suggestions about how we might do things differently or or um, better to be able to make sure, you know, I... I meet you where you need to be met <laughs> then let me know and same with the founder let them know where you're up to say hi I'll appreciate some feedback are you happy with the way i've taken over these accounts have you heard anything from them that you would like to share with me any suggestions about how i might improve the way that i partner with them i'm all ears you may even for certain clients if you're not sure about the the quality of the relationship or how you're settling into it you might want to think about asking the founder to make an informal call just to say, hey, it's been a couple of months. I want to just check in with you, make sure everything's okay with Warwick and the way he's managing your account. Let me know. Something like that would be welcome for the stickier account. Some of them are going to be like smooth sailing. No point really, but if he wants to call him or she wants to call him, by all means, but I don't think it's necessary. But for the ones that might be troublesome or the ones where you feel like the founder is really cautious, encourage them to make a call and find out, you know, uh, one-on-one with the, with the client. Highly recommend that. Now, What sometimes happens is despite all of this going really well, there will be one or two clients the founder just won't let go of. They are just so attached. Usually they're the bigger ones. They're the ones where there is high risk uh, or impact to the business if they left. So usually the ones that spend a lot uh, or the ones potentially where they are um, personally involved. Sometimes founders become friends with the client. They play golf together or they're, their husbands, you know, are friends outside of work or they just, you know, socialize in the same circles or they've just become friends just through the the trajectory of the business and the growth that's come with that and the way that both of them have, have worked together over time. So those are the toughest nuts to crack. Don't be shy about, you know, call, calling the founder out on the fact that they're dragging their feet. I don't make this my priority. I'm happy to just start with the ones where they're happy for me to lead and build out a bit of a time frame. I want a hard line in the sand. Like if I start within like two months, I want to have been taken over most of those accounts. I want them to be clear that I'm the account manager from this date and let's go, right? There's no no real issues. Like you're not going to screw it up. Like it's just not going to happen. You've got the safety net of the founder there. It's really irrational not for, not for you to take them on, right? But the ones where you know the founder doesn't want to let go, and I have had a founder where I've said to him, all of your team are 
desperate to get these accounts. You told me you need to let go of these accounts when we started training together. That was your number one goal was to free up your time so you're not working 18 hour weeks and can't go on vacation with your family. That's what you said to me. Six months later, you still have these accounts. Why is it? Oh, they might, they'll leave if, if I don't look after them. That's bullshit. It just is not the case. You're just talking about changing the dynamic of the relationship. And that's what you need to remind the founder of. You're not going anywhere. You own the business. You're still in the business. You're strategically guiding the business towards the direction that's going to add more value for our customers. And that's where your time is best spent. You're still around if I need you. The client knows that. They know that they can bring you in if there is something that historically you have the expertise to answer or you just know all the 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 background or they just like to have you involved at a certain level you can join my business reviews every so often uh, you can jump on a call once in a while you can do your own outreach but at a different level you know based on guidelines and kind of outcomes that we decide together you can still build your relationship with the ceo of the client but you don't have to manage them day to day let me take that on so really need to kind of have those reality checks with the with the founder it's not that they're excluded from the relationship it's just that they're not front front of house anymore right they're actually you know developing strategy and you know guiding the business they don't need to be in the reads with the client day to day but they're more than welcome to step in once in a while to show their face, to build relationships, or to add some value to some strategic conversations through account planning or business reviews. So for those final couple of accounts that they just won't let go of, it's really about focusing on collaboration and support, about transitioning to a different type of relationship, uh, and about you becoming more independent as the founder's confidence grows, and about them letting go, and reminding them about the different type of relationship they can have with the client more strategic, more kind of C-suite to C-suite, you know, keep, keep, keep involved in whatever level you think is appropriate, but outside of the key account management day-to-day relationship. Now, if you're struggling with this, either as a founder who won't let go or a key account manager who is struggling to get the, the founder to release their clutches on the, the accounts, grab some time with me. You can book a career power hour with me or better yet, why not join the CAN club? That is my membership community for key account managers. You can join the elite ranks of super key account managers around the globe that are all there to become the best that they can be. Included are courses, training, guides, templates, and even some one-to-one coaching with me. You can get monthly or annual subscriptions. So check that out at thecamclub.com. All right, now let's wrap this up with a quick recap. We talked about understanding the founder's attachment. It's an emotional attachment, not always rational, but built on the fact that they've, they've grown so much together over the years and they are invested in the client's outcomes and you know they've played a big significant part in their success. Uh, build trust step by step, despite the fact that they have complete confidence in you. I know they do. That's why they hired you. Start with an initial batch of accounts, figure out how you want to update your founder, let them know what's going on, let them know what's coming up in terms of meetings, decisions, activities, that kind of stuff. Then you want to start to share the successes, right? Not just what you're doing, but the evidence that it's working. Then you want to think about how do you get some feedback, right? And finally, you want to transition to that collaboration and support phase where you invite the founder to let go of those final couple of accounts and say, hey, I'm in a good place. I've done what I need to do. I've got these successes. I've got the validation of the client. I've got all the feedback. I'm doing a good job. Hand them over. Let them go. You can focus on the strategic stuff. And that's it. Take some time. Be patient. Appreciate that it's not going to happen in one day. But you'll get there. I absolutely know it. As key account managers, your ability to foster trust with founders is crucial. It's not just about taking over. It's about making them feel secure that their life's work is in good hands, your hands. And by understanding, communicating, and demonstrating your capability and reliability, you'll not only gain their trust, but you also pave the way for your own growth. So thanks for tuning in to the Cam Club podcast. I'm your favorite Cam Coach, Warwick Brown. It's been a pleasure helping you unlock strategies to win trust and take charge. Don't forget to subscribe for more insights. Share this episode if you found it helpful. And I'm going to see you in another episode real soon.